Hello, my name is Maria Sklodowska, more commonly known as Mali Kiri. All of my life's work has led me to the discovery of two new elements and opened countless doors for the scientific community. Today, I will attempt to draw my life, including the studies I have conducted and my exciting findings. I was born on November 7th in the year 1867 in Warsaw, Poland. I was the youngest of three older sisters, Sofia, Bronisława, and Helena, and an older brother, Josef. I finished my high school education by the time I turned 15 years old. Times were tough. My parents were involved in the January uprisings of 1863, losing most of our fortune and our family's property, evidently affecting my siblings and I financially. My sister Bronie Suava and I, we really wanted to attend university to do scientific research. However, the University of Warsaw did not accept women. As a compromise, Bronie Suava and I moved out of the country to study elsewhere. Tuition is tremendously costly, so I worked as a governess, teaching children in a family's home, while my sister studied at the Sorbonne in Paris. In return, my sister would help pay for my tuition in two years' time. Finally, I registered at the Solvan, but instead of living with my sister like we had originally planned, I decided to rent a small garret close to school so I could have more time to study. I definitely needed that time to study, for my high school education was not enough for what was taught at the Solvan. I am eternally grateful to have gotten my degrees at the Solvan. There I met my husband Pierre. He was a researcher and a professor at the Municipal School of Industrial Physics and Chemistry in Paris. We share the same drive and determination and we have been happily married since the summer of 1895. My first experiments were done with instruments that my husband had built prior to our marriage. I pelted the air with uranium rays and used one of Pierre's devices to measure the electrical current in the air. Nobody knew what radioactivity really was and it often puzzled me. What is this radioactivity? I believe that those rays emitted from the uranium are an atomic property. However, that would completely change the definition of an atom. It was a risk. It could change everything. Dalton's atomic theory stated that one, all matter is composed of atoms and all atoms are indestructible and indivisible. Two, all atoms of a given element are identical in terms of mass. And finally, a chemical reaction is the rearrangement of atoms. I am eternally grateful and humbled by the Austrian government's generous donation of pitch blend ore, several tons of it in fact. Pierre and I had to relocate to an old shed outside of school where Pierre worked. Slowly, we separated the pitch blend ore, ridding it from sand, clay, and other impurities. It took us several months until we were able to see something we have never seen before. Pierre and I, our suspicions rang true. Pitch blend does contain a new, undiscovered element. We have successfully isolated one metric ton of pitch blend, yielding only approximately 100 micrograms of this new element. I called it polonium, in honor of my home country of Poland. Isolating what we now know as radium was another long process. It also took Pierre and I a couple of months to complete, seeing we had about a ton of pitch blend to purify. When the First World War broke out in 1914, I decided to put my studies on hold to supply these portable x-ray machines to the front line. As the director of the Red Cross Radiology Service, I was in charge of installing the x-ray machines into vehicles and setting up x-ray units at field hospitals. Later, I would train other women as aides, less pressure on myself. I used a radioactive gas given off by radium that I called radium emanation to sterilize of infected tissues of soldiers. Someone told me that about one million soldiers benefit from my work and that makes me tremendously content. Despite my efforts, the French government never displayed any sort of formal recognition. However, it did not bother me much. My lifelong work and research are still applied commercially and have helped shape the chemistry and nuclear physics field. For one, polonium, a silver gray semi-metal, has a couple of commercial applications. It can be used to eliminate static charge on textiles and can be used to remove dust from photographic film. Under strict control, polonium may also be used as a lightweight heat source, as thermal electric power in space satellites, simply because a small amount of polonium can release such a large amount of energy. Once it has been successfully extracted from uranium ores, 
Radium has few commercial uses due to its toxicity. Radium is a shiny silver radioactive metal that can be used to treat prostate cancer that has spread to the bones. Due to the calcium content in the bones, and because radium and calcium are both group 2 metals, it can be used to target affected bone cells. Radium was also previously used in luminous paint for clocks and watch dials. The health hazards and risks from exposure became evident, and radium was eventually replaced with promethium. Overall, I am very humbled and grateful for the opportunities I have had thus far. I am thankful for the help provided by my dear husband Pierre, and I cannot wait to see what the future holds. My own future and the future of science as a whole. Now, how do you end these videos? Subscribe? Well then, until next time, farewell.